There we go, the fish on. Louisiana redfish at its best. Rooster on the wild coast. Florida Keys bonefish on the Hobie. This week on Hobie Outdoor Adventures, well, we're back in southern Louisiana at Gros Savon Waterfowl and Wildlife Lodge. Now last year, Morgan caught a record-breaking bass on this body of water, so this year, we're inviting two Bassmaster Elite pounds. Series pros to fish with us in this amazing fishery. Mike Iaconelli, also known as Ike, is the only angler to have won the Bassmaster Classic, Bassmaster Angler of the Year, and Bass Nation Championship. Carl Jockamson is the Australian Bass Tournaments champion, and he's also the first Bassmaster Elite Series pro from Australia. Carl is, uh, to me, the premier example of hard work and what it takes to make it as a pro angler. You know, Carl's story is a lot more difficult than guys that grow up here in the States. He developed a love and passion for the sport of fishing in Australia, and he took that and brought it to the States and turned it into a professional tournament career. That's a really difficult thing to do. I gotta tell you, just being from New Jersey, being from a part of the country where fishing wasn't, you know, a, a, a pastime, it was difficult. Very, very lucky opportunity for me. I got to fish with Mike Iaconelli. Um, he's one of my heroes growing up in Australia, probably, you know, been following him since I was about 14, 15, maybe a little bit younger. Um, ever since the Bass Masters kind of started to make a wave into Australia. That's what I wanted to do, you know, I wanted to do what, what Mike had done and about reading his, his book and seeing his story gave me, you know, the belief that I could do it too. Oh, that's a big one. You know, we've had a slow start this morning, and um, I had one bedding fish that kept hitting the swim bait, and I kept missing it. Man, when things are tough, this is a sure bet bait right here. Soft stick bait. You've heard them called magic hot dogs. The great thing about this is it's, it's so easy to rig and use. It's just a six inch straight piece of plastic. Texas rig it on a five or six out hook throw it out, and, and let the bait do its own movement. The great thing about this kayak, like I said, it's very stealthy. Kayak fishing stealthy, and I was able to see a big one, six, seven, eight pound fish, cruising real slow. And usually when they're doing that, they're committed to an area. And I stop, settle down, and look back, and there's actually a pair here. It's a male and a female together. Got her. Got me. That's the male. It's a great, great example of why that, you talk about accessories for kayaks, that power pole is so key. We made a drift, we let that fish settle back in, we came down, we spiked down, and we could effectively fish that bed. Mirage Drive 180 is, you know, a game changer. It's changing the way that people fish out of a kayak. You know, maneuverability for me as a bass angler in a kayak is one of the biggest factors. And I'm talking about casting angles, setting up on a fish, fighting a fish, um, and the ability, you know, and not only, you know, going places, going forward and reverse, but drifting those super shallow flats. And I'm not kidding you, I'm talking about six, eight inches deep uh, and got to the next little deep flat and caught some big fish. Once again, you know, in any other kind of rig, that'd be near impossible. But with the Mirage Drive, it's easy to get over those shallow water areas. Hobie Outdoor Adventures will be right back with more Big Bass from Gros Savon Waterfowl and Wildlife Lodge. Stay tuned. 
Hobie Outdoor Adventures is brought to you by Gerber Fishing Gear, Fish Beyond, Lorenz, Find, Navigate, Dominate, Power Pole Micro Anchor, Swift, Silent, Secure, and Small, and by Aftco, American Fishing Tackle Company. Welcome back to Hobie Outdoor Adventures. Well, we're at Gros Savon Waterfowl and Wildlife Lodge in Southern Louisiana with Bassmaster Elite Series Pro Mike Iaconelli and Carl Jockamson. The success of a fishery is really based on how it's managed. And the guys here do a tremendous job at managing these fisheries. So, you know, basically the lake that we fish this week, it's, uh, you know, hundreds and hundreds of not thousands of acres of marshy looking bass water. And there's, there's really cool dynamic to it. So you've got deeper water canal systems and ditch systems uh, intersecting these giant flats. And uh, you know, on the flats themselves is a diverse amount of cover. That's the deal. I, especially when you have a day and you're coming out and you're catching a lot of numbers. We started out this morning and we we went to a soft stick bait and we caught lots and lots of two to up to four pounds. But when you're looking for a bigger bite, one of the ways to get a bigger bite is to use a big bait. You've heard of that big bait, big bass theory, it's true. Went to a six inch swim bait and you don't get as many bites, but when you get a bite, it's usually a quality fish. That's a big one. That's awesome. That's a fun way to catch them on that thing. Wow. I can probably say the same thing. When you tournament fish for so long, it's really nice to get out on the water and not have to think about too much and just go fishing with your friends and chill and catch fish. This is what got me into fishing and this is why I love fishing so much. Small guy, but I need to get my numbers up, get the confidence going, and then I'll, uh, I might throw some big baits. So I'm fishing out of the Pro Angler 14, which is one of the biggest kayaks or almost boats there is. And I can stand up in this, I can make casts, I can frog fish, I can flip, I can do just about everything and I can have a lot of tackle. I'm running four rods right now, I've got my backpack, um, it's, it's full of tackle. So, you know, really I don't have to have any sacrifices from my bass boat. Carl, what do you like about kayak fishing versus fishing out of a bass boat? I think it just like simplifies everything so much. You can just, anyone can do it. I did it when I was a kid. It brings back really good memories from just having a one rod and a little bit of tackle and going fishing. A bit more of an adventure. Yeah, it brings me back too. And I love fishing at the ground level with the fish. Yeah. Being at their level, you know, it's something special about it, man. Stealthy, they don't know you're there. I like smashing them on the swim bait and I've been going back and forward. End up putting on a Molex Rashad weedless straight through braid. And uh, that's my best fish of the day, so. So um, that's a nice one. Smash the swim bait fall, pretty fish. Man, there are so many things that I like about kayak fishing, and uh, I get to fish a lot. You know, I mentioned before, the one thing I love is I love being at the ground level with the fish, on the fish's level, and I could ease up on them, pull down, and watch that whole thing happen at the level of the fish. I love that. I love the aspect of accessibility and how easy it is to kayak fish, you know? You take that kayak off the top or pull it out of the back of your truck and you launch it. It's that easy, it's pretty amazing. You know, the other great example this week of, of kayak fishing is where you can get with a kayak. They were places I could not get my big boat. Um, you know, easing through a cut 
as wide as the kayak, you know, drifting over uh, a pad field that's that deep. Um, accessibility of that kayak is a big thing for me. When I get in that Hobie and I sit down, I really, it's almost like a flashback to why I fell in love with fishing. You know, when I was a kid, I did a lot of small boat, canoe, and bank fishing, and it brings me back to that. It makes it fun, it makes it exciting, and I love the fact that, you know, when I'm in my kayak, I remember why I have a passion for the sport. Well, coming up, it's time for Louisiana Redfish. Morgan and Carl are taking Hobie Outbacks for a spin on the flat at Gross Savon Lodge. Hobie Outdoor Adventures has been brought to you by Hobie Polarized, trusted, quality, heritage. St. Croix Rod, best rods on earth. Rail Blazer, hold everything with Rail Blazer. And by Scotty, the way to fish. Welcome back to Hobie Outdoor Adventures. Now, Gross Savon Waterfowl and Wildlife Lodge offers not only freshwater fishing, but also provides saltwater fishing opportunities for its guests. Gross Savon borders the finest saltwater fishing lake in the state of Louisiana, and possibly the finest coastal saltwater estuary in the country. Morgan Promnitz and Carl Jockumson are trying something a little bit different here at Gros Savon Lodge. They're going to launch their Hobie Outbacks, heading to some flats and searching for redfish. It's really marshy here in the bayou with some extremely shallow areas, so we're going to load the two Outbacks on a gator tail boat and run out to this back pond that should be loaded with some redfish. Carl fishes for bass all the time professionally, but he hasn't caught a big bull red yet, so that's what we're going to do today, Carl. We're going to hook you up to one. Lots of stories about Louisiana redfish. I heard they're pretty aggressive, so I'm, I'm keen to uh, see how they fight. We ran along these narrow canals, and we came out to this pond, and it just opens up into a really cool flat. We threw the two Hobie Outbacks in the water. Carl and I loaded up, and we were really excited to stalk onto those flats really quietly, use that Mirage Drive, and stake out with some anchors and then put some casts on those fish. The other thing is with the Mirage Drive, it's so quiet and stealthy and because the fins fold up flush against the bottom of the boat, you can actually flutter kick them and move across just, you know, inches of water. So Hobie Outback was our choice today and it paid off really well. Got him. Yep. Yeah, Carl. <laughs> Whoa, look at that Whoa, wave. Look at that wave Whoa. There's more of them, aren't there? Oh my. <laughs> oh my. Oh boy, I don't want to get near that actually. Dude, that's a big fish, Carl. I'm going to stay out of your way here. Oh no, come off. That's all right, I see him pushing down there. Just get that whopper plopper back in there. That was a giant, dude. Unfortunately, with fishing, sometimes there's just nothing you can do and those hooks pulled, so. I didn't get to get it in and hold it up, but just that experience of hooking one and seeing the top water explosion was, was good enough for me. The water was a little bit stained, and it did make things a little bit more complicated. You almost had to put that lure right in front of the fish's face for them to eat. So we kept on casting and casting, and we we're actually getting the odd thump here and there, and it was because our lures were coming across and bumping into fish. Oh, there you go. Nice. First cast on it, dude. What was that? It's just on a little three inch tail on a jig head. Okay. They weren't even sniffing at my top water. It looks like a big one. I don't think it's as big as that first one that you hooked, but. Oh, whoa, that's not even a red. I think it's a drum. Yeah. All right, Carl. It's not the exact species that we're looking for, but I'll take them. Drum? Black drum. I'd, cool. I'd say uh, a cousin of the redfish. I think it's pretty similar to the freshwater drum. Okay. Go and tell your redfish cousin that I want to catch him. Oh, come off. It was a drum. It's another, it's another drum. I think those are all drum that we're seeing. Yeah, got him. Yeah, it's feeling a bit more ready. Yep. Nah, drum. 
Another drum. That was a uh, awesome fight, shallow water. Good fun. So this is one of our new colors for 2018. We call it Sunrise Orange. But today it's Sunrise Orange splotted with some Louisiana brown mud. You know, we've been working this flat for about two hours and we are just not connecting with redfish. Let's load the kayaks up, run back into another bay and give that spot a try. We'll find out if the new location they decided will work out for them. Hobie Outdoor Adventures will be right back after these messages. Hobie Outdoor Adventures has been brought to you by Plano, protect your passion. Mustad, defining fishing hooks since 1877. And by O'Meals, changing the way you eat outdoors. Welcome back to Hobie Outdoor Adventures. Morgan and Carl have arrived at the new spot and the wind is starting to pick up. We set up on the top end of it so we could use the wind to our advantage and just drift down um, the flat looking for fish. And uh, we actually pulled the mirage drives because we were literally in six inches or less of water the entire time. But the cool thing about that was that we could see these redfish pushing water. All of a sudden on my right side, I see a couple of fish pushing some water and I, I just flipped my bait out and I must have gotten really lucky and hit this fish right in the nose because as soon as it hit the water, set the hook, he takes off and this feels like it's the right kind. How big? Um, good one. Oh, it looks like about 30 inches. Wow. Feels good to hook the right kind. I don't know if he's done yet or not. Oh yeah, he's a good fish, man. The move has paid off. That's a really nice fish. There you go. Finally, the right kind. Beautiful red fish. So Carl, yours was a lot bigger than this I could see this morning, but we got some Louisiana gold, finally. I'll take that one any day. Gorgeous, gorgeous fish. I'll let her go. Thank you, honey. That beautiful spot on the tail, that's what we've been looking for all day. I think she's ready to go. The conditions weren't ideal, but we were battling, you know, the whole time. That's what fishing is all about, is just continually casting, moving, and, um, you know, like Ike says, never giving up. Morgan and I just kept casting, kept casting, yep. and then the hard work there paid goes. off. Morgan caught a beautiful Louisiana red, and that's what never stop casting is all about, because one more cast can produce fish of a lifetime. Since we have an extra morning in Gros Savon Waterfowl and Wildlife Lodge, Keaton and Carl are heading out to the water for the last fishing session of the trip. Good morning from beautiful Gros Savon Lodge, Lake Charles, Louisiana. We're wrapping up, actually this is called the Hobie Hideout. We, we renamed it. Uh, Carl, my mate, Carl yep. Dockinson. All the way from Australia, from Bass to Bluegill right now, Gros Savon Lodge has really turned it on. Ruse coming brim fishing with us this morning. We're going to put the Hobies in and have some fun. Come on, Rue. Let's go fish. Coming fishing, Rue. Coming. A special treat, 100 yards from the lodge. Hop in, Rue. Come on. Let's go. Rue, got to break. You got to break the. Uh, be the first one. Rue, don't you bite it. Don't bite it, Rue. That's a nice one. The color of these fish is unreal. Ah, uh -uh. That's just great fun. Right near the lodge. It's not the biggest one we've caught, but it's a nice one. Beautiful colors. Let him go and catch another one. What do you think, Rue? Fish on. Need a double. Room catching up. 
Not like what I've seen. No, this is a normal bluegill. This is not a gross Savon bluegill. Not sure how this one snuck in here. Beauty. Oh, I watched him eat it. <laughs> Rude. Got excited. Oh, if you like to pop up, Rue, come back here. The Gros Savon, um, you know, from a fishing standpoint, is world class. But there's a lot of other things that happen here, you know, from the staff to the lodging to the food, the meals, um, you know, all that is, is a total package. The fishing's world class and the hospitality is world class. And to get the fish out of my Hobie, man, it's, it's been special. And I can, I can tell you for sure that I'll be back. You can find out more or even book your next fishing trip at GrowSavon.com. Hey, and don't forget to check out our previous episodes at HobieOutdoorAdventures.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on the new episode of Hobie Outdoor Adventures.